it's right or wrong. It's about most popular. People it could are, be wrong. It could actually be wrong. I'm, just, I'm actually just impressed by how wrong people are. <laughs> <laughs> this week on Backward Compatible, Lisa Bracken, Eric Brody, Phil Johnson, and Leighton Lucky visit to play a round of a Famicom feud. Plus, the group discusses some of their earliest gaming experiences. The BackwardCompatible.com podcast starts right now. Backward Compatible. Greetings, Backward Compatible listeners. This is podcast number 26. And you're listening to the Famicom Feud. Yeah, so we're here. We're joined with uh, uh, several guests. Um, we have uh, Lisa Bracken. We have Eric Brody. Mm-hmm. And we have Leighton Lucky. And we also have Phil Johnson. Um, and we're going to hear a little bit from everybody once we uh, uh, go into game show mode, uh, but we're going to get right into the game. So uh, we've surveyed, or I've surveyed close to, we'll say, um, a divisible of 100 people uh, that have attended, uh, mostly mostly gamers, as far as I know, all gamers, that have, many of them who have attended uh, UT Dallas, and uh, we're going to go ahead and get this game going. So first two people, since you guys are already sitting there, it's going. Uh, the teams are going to be Chris... Doc and Lisa versus Eric, Layton, and Phil. Woo! And we're going to start off with uh, Eric versus Chris. Okay. <laughs> and the way that we're going to do this is we're going to roll in, which is something that uh, Doc came up with. So you both are going to take a d20, and uh, it doesn't matter what you roll. The, the idea is that the first... <laughs> what if I get a natural 20, though? Yeah. Doesn't matter. It's just for the it's just for the sound. So whoever who's ever hit uh, uh, you know hits first, both of you you know keep your hands at about the same height, and whoever thinks that they have the right yeah keep it hot actually. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, and then whoever's hit the table first, like if you think you know the answer, drop it. Uh, can we go back to the buzzer? Because oh, buzzer's working. <laughs> I like the big sort button. of. Oh, there we go. Right. Push the candlelight. Like so the the idea <laughs> is that. Um, if you do roll in and you're thinking, I'm just going to guess the answer, mm. um, you only have two seconds to answer. So if you don't say anything, you get a buzzer, it goes to the next person. Okay. So the idea is, I'm going to ask you a question. It's going to be most popular surveyed. You have to pick the most popular answer, what you think was said by the most people. Okay. That's the idea. It doesn't matter what's right or wrong. It's about who said it the most. All right? Cool. Okay. All right. A divisible of 100 people have been surveyed. Uh, 100 gamers have been surveyed. Uh, name one way you might defeat an enemy in a Mario platformer. Jump on ahead. Okay. Let me think. I forgot the ladies out first. What is jump on? Ahead? <laughs> I think that's a different. Show. Do we have a? We don't have a ding, do we? Unfortunately. <laughs> Does that say something about us that we went for the negative feedback but not, <laughs> not the positive? Yeah. We are game designers. <laughs> All right. Ding. That's correct. There is. It is on the board, but where is it on the board? You tell Oops, us. I don't know. <laughs> it's the number one answer. Yeah. Oh. 42 points. This is, by the way, a single round. Each of these points is how many points you gain this round so far. Cool. If your team wins. Okay. So now, now it's your, you get to choose if you want to play or pass. If you pass, they get to play through this entire question. If you play, you all get to play. I would say let's play then. Okay. Okay. Do all right. Have all those memorized? Uh, I actually have them. That's, I have them written on here. The actual. Oh, okay. uh, <laughs> I was. He also has a pen handy just in case. Yeah. He's <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, one ups. Okay, so um, we're gonna go over to the team of, of Eric Layton and, and Phil. Do you guys have a team name? Do you have a team name? Would you like a team name? Team Doomed. The fam. The something family. It's always family related. Oh, okay. Um, uh, the guest family. <laughs> the Adams family. I would probably. I always end up it's going back to uh, Final uh, Fantasy. Mine would be Shinra family. See, I always said keep it in the. Family. Keep it in the. Ooh, <laughs> ooh, I like that. Okay, this is the yeah. keep it in the yeah. family. Yeah. All right, it's the keep it in the family. All right, so the way this round works is y'all cannot help each other. I'm going to go through. You've already answered a question, so I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask the same question to Layton. No one can help him. Is mm-hmm. the way that we're, for this first part. Um, but first, uh, I'm going to ask a little bit about y'all's team. 
So, um, Eric, if you could tell me a little bit, a little bit about yourself, what you've been up to, what you've been doing. Sure. So, um, I'm a producer for an indie dev studio here in Dallas called uh, Poly Night Games. Mm. Um, I guess last time that I was on, we were in the middle of a Kickstarter. That's right. So, yeah. So, since then, we did successfully get Kickstarted. So, Ooh, yeah. that was congratulations. awesome. Thank mm-hmm. you. Um, and I do actually want to take a second to say congratulations so far on y'all's Kickstarter. It's oh, looking really good. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, but, uh, so yeah, since then we have just kind of gone into actual development mode and that's really kind of large what we've been doing. We've been in a major crunch right now, so I'm trying to get as much sleep as I can when I can. And, <laughs> um, but we're luckily ne- nearing the end of that. And so, uh, hopefully we'll have a fun demo for con season ready. So that'll be nice in the next few weeks. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. Excellent. Layton, you want to tell us a little bit since it's just your turn? Yeah. Um, my name's Layton. I'm a graduate <laughs> student. And I spend most of my time either making games or doing TA work. And uh, <laughs> that's it. Okay. Well, I'm going to ask you the question. Mm. Uh, same question. No, Phil. <laughs> no, it, it will be yours right after Layton's turn. I was supposed to. <laughs> oh, like, I, I, already, I, okay. I messed up the order. Yeah. I was supposed to ask, ask you when you first came up, and I didn't do it, so I got it. All right. So, uh, Layton, <clears throat> name one way. We're looking for the most popular answer. Name one way you might defeat an enemy in a Mario platformer. Fireball. Okay. Ding. Ding. Oh, and Toss a fireball. Two. Eighteen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Phil, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm always late to the party. Um, I'm Phil Johnson. I am a game designer at Playful Corp. I actually work on the Lucky Star games. Um, before that, I was a college professor and all that. Um, but currently, I also am almost a regular on the Still in Beta podcast. And I also have a few projects... Uh, media related that are in the pipe that maybe I'll come back and be able to talk about sometime. Awesome. Cool. 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 Excellent. All right, Phil. Same question. Remember, you have two seconds to answer. Mm -hmm. Name one way you might defeat an enemy in a Mario platformer. With a superstar. Superstar? Ding. Starman Invincible. Mm -hmm. All right, nine points. So, Eric, it's back to you. Okay. So... Same question. Name one way you might defeat an enemy in a Mario platformer. Uh, hitting them with a Koopa shell. A Koopa shell. Ding! Yeah! You guys are doing pretty Killing good so it. far, but you still got one oh, answer. Uh, Layton? Uh, uh, <laughs> same question. I can re- reread it if you want me to. <laughs> no, I got name, it. Name one way ahead. you might defeat an enemy <laughs> in a Mario platformer. Um, sliding down a hill. I'll, just, I'll take it. I'll Calm it down, you. Jim. I'll, it's, only two seconds. it's only two seconds, but I'll give it to you. Sliding down a hill. Mm, sorry. Two X. Buzzes. I did. X. All right, Phil, same question. You guys get three, three Xs. If you get to three, it's going to go over to the other team, and they can steal, and they can get all the points that all you just the got. They got get them. every single point. Uh, taking the floor out from under them. Taking the floor out from under them? This, this is wrong. Mm. <laughs> that's, that's basically all. Oh, it's not about okay. what's right or wrong. It's about most popular. People it could are, be wrong. It could actually be wrong. No, I'm, just, I'm actually matter. just impressed by how wrong people are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so it's one of two things. I don't know which one they would have gone with. By the way, uh, right. other team over here, which has not had a name, you guys can actually be talking about what you think. Just don't we, let We them don't want them to over here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Eric, I'll read the question again. You get two seconds after I finish reading. Name one way you might defeat an enemy in a Mario platformer. Um, with the butt. Like hitting him on the head with a butt. Ah, oh, that's how I defeat my enemies. <laughs> sorry. Okay. Might have been the other one. If they'd ask, how does Phil defeat? Back over right. to uh, do, do you have a name? Family team. Yeah, we're Doc and Kruger. Doc and Kruger there family team. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And Lisa's part of Doc. Right. right. She's Mrs. Doc. Mrs. So. Doc. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Cool. All right, so um, y'all can answer. Uh, uh, Chris, I guess you're still the spokesman for this team, so you all can just can talk amongst yourselves. You have, I guess, they give them a decent amount of time. So, but same question. So go ahead and do your little talking bit. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Chris. Yes. One way you might defeat an enemy in a Mario platformer. Uh, eaten by Yoshi. Eaten by Yoshi. Oh, wow. Sorry. <laughs> the points go to the uh, keeping in the. <laughs> Uh, okay, so can I, I guess, guess what the last one was? If you want. <laughs> uh, is it the giant mushroom? No. Is oh, it really? What no. is it? Wow. Hammer. 
Oh! oh. Yeah, but that's less. That's 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 less common Kong, than knocking the floor out from them because that's. Did you I didn't, also, kill I didn't say that. the answer. It's, yeah. most, it's most popular answer. It's most popular. Well, you did say that sometimes they would be wrong. Yeah. And that is truly exactly. wrong. Something. I, I, I agree. Who did you so wrong? wrong. Why, why, why the the these were these were game design students. <laughs> Confront. Well, yeah. All right, y'all can keep these cards for now. Aww. Those are the points that you've earned so far, and I'll tally them up. At I mean, don't keep them on the book later. But yeah. you don't really defeat enemies; you defeat barrels. Okay, so now we've got Chris versus, uh, sorry, Doc versus Layton. Do you both have your dice? Okay, take your yes. dice. So be ready. I'm going to ask the question. Remember, you you can technically roll before I finish asking, but I'm going to stop asking the question. Really? Okay. Oh yeah, totally. But I stop That's asking the question. You. So it may not be to your best interest. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> Name a weapon you might use in an RPG. Doc. A sword. A sword. Oops. Uh, I always forget to lay these out, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> Ding. Sword. Number one answer. Good work. Okay. I have the top five answers for those that are listening and can't see. I have the top five answers. On the board. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, Lisa, name a weapon you might use. Are we going to do intros? Because we haven't done intros. Oh, that's true. Yes, I will do Come that. On, uh, <laughs> so, Lisa, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, hi, I'm Lisa Bracken. I am not in the industry. I'm actually an educator, an educational therapist, and a diagnostician, and I'm glad to be uh, part of the group. She works with a lot of kids who play video games. Though. That is there very true. Yeah. And I actually use video games in the work that I do. That's true, you do. Cool. So. All right. Well, let's see how much you know about video games. That's up for the question there. <laughs> Name a weapon you might use in an RPG. In an RPG? Um. Sorry. I, have, I, I gave you an extra second there. I too. know. <laughs> Sorry. I had one in mind, and then I questioned myself, so okay. then I went, no. Just, if you, if you don't, if you, you just butt out anything, basically. Okay. <laughs> okay. You still have plenty of chances. Chris, would you like to tell us a little bit, since you haven't had a chance, uh, what you've been up to lately? What I've been up to lately? Um, finishing up grad school, I'm working on a uh, short game called Pilgrims. It is a narrative-driven game with branching narrative and fun stuff. And is John um, Wayne part one of the characters that you can play? <laughs> he's not. Huh. Yeah, Sorry. Um, and I'm also uh, working here with Doc on Yo. our new Kickstarter project, which Eric mentioned earlier, um, yeah. called The Genre. Um, we are in the middle of the campaign, and it's going pretty well so far. Yeah. And they could listen to uh, more about genre, I believe it was Podcast 24, right? 24. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, name a weapon you might use in an RPG. Staff. Really? I'm sorry. <laughs> Staff? Mm. It's not one of the most popular answers. I'll go ahead and say it was an answer, mm. but not one of the most mm-hmm. popular mm-hmm. answers. Chris. No. These are the top five <laughs> answers. Okay, Doc? Why don't you tell us a little bit about what you've been up to? Well, uh, most recently I've been working on a super secret setting for an RPG that we're uh, working on. Oh. And it's uh, codenamed Templar, if that tells you anything. Hmm. So um, it, it turns out that um, Columbus did not discover America. Hmm. In, in, in fact, it had been previously colonized for many hundreds, maybe even thousands of years. Interesting. So like the real world. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But it's been a really fun setting to, to work on, so I've been th- some of that. Cool. Are there fun jingles related to who discovered it, like there are for Chris Columbus? Mm-hmm. Uh, I can I can probably write them. Okay, uh, awesome. But, you know, submit your fun jingles to DocKingKruger.com. <laughs> what, what is a jingle for Christopher Columbus? Did you get those in school where you would sing little jingles about, like, Christopher Columbus sailed the ocean blue, like all that kind of stuff? Right? Yeah, for, in 1492. So, yeah, yeah. It's like little songs about Christopher Columbus. Oh. Columbus sailed the ocean blue in you 1492. Had to They'd wrap your hands with knuckles. Not to be confused with <laughs> Columbus sailed the deep blue sea in 1493, which was also true, but not the correct answer on the test. Right. <laughs> it didn't pass the uh, mm. standardized response. That's right. <laughs> That's All right. what they get from its scantrons. Doc, you can keep your team alive, or the keep it in the family can steal your um, points so far. Wow, okay. Okay, so, name a weapon you might use in an RPG. I'm gonna go with gun. Gun. Ding. Oh. Gun <laughs> blaster. Oh, wow. Okay. Remember, I didn't specify fantasy RPG. Yeah, no, it's so. not. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, Lisa, it's back to you. You get two seconds after I finish. Name a weapon you might use in an RPG. Magic missile. Magic missile. <laughs> <laughs> magic missile. But only at darkness. Ding. Really? Really? Wow. Oh, just oh, magic. magic. Okay. That was oh. going to be magic. my answer. That was my answer. Yeah. yeah. 
Uh, well, if they miss one more, you guys can still steal it. They still have to get the next two questions. So, Chris? Yep. Same question. A weapon you might use in an RPG? Hand to hand. Hand to hand? I'm sorry. Is that the same right. thing? Unarmed? Unarmed, yeah. No. Okay, wow. No. Sorry, keep it in the family. You can go ahead and talk amongst yourselves. You got some time here. Lance. Was that our third that word? Just that was the third strike. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I guess. Yeah, actually, actually maybe. Weapon triangle. Actually, actually, yeah, that's actually probably. Yeah. Do axe. Yeah. Axe is a good one to go We've with. decided. <laughs> I know we're right answers, but not. Oh, so yeah. Layton, Layton, Layton is the spokesperson, oh, okay. which, by the way, means that you don't have to listen to them. If you want to answer something totally different, it's 100% up to you. So, no, we're going with Axe. You're going with Axe? Yes. Mm -hmm. And my Axe. Uh, sorry. Wow. wow. Again, sorry. they're wrong. <laughs> yeah. All right, number two answer was with we, 18. We can't steal the steal? No. no. We can steal it back. Oh, mm -hmm. No, actually, no. You get the points, actually. You just get the points. Oh, we do get the points. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, you guys won. Oh, the bow. Yeah. 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 bow and arrow. Yes, yeah. just the points they got, not all the points. Uh, yeah, so, bow and arrow. Answer. And then the other one is actually an oversized, massive sword axe club. That kind of thing. Yeah, but so if why you is that sword? Sword is <laughs> <sword, laughs> right there. Well, because like, because so, that so. many people actually wrote in, like, giant, massive, or, like, super mega. Halberd. Yeah. like so. I didn't say halberd. They specifically said. White queen and black Massive or oversized or ridiculous. Ridiculously mm. huge, and then a weapon. Jim, I didn't know you were surveying yeah. JRPG nerds. I was. I'm not sure I feel I, I, like I, I was could participate apparently in this surveying anymore. JRPG nerds. I, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> well, JRPG is its own genre. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> Their survey needs work. <laughs> All right, we're now. It's it's okay though. We're now moving into the double round. Um, I'm I'm not. We, I, I'm sort of keeping track of points, but I haven't tallied them up. But I, oh, we'll see. I'm pretty sure that keeping the family is, is winning, but it should be pretty close at this point because okay. you, you guys both did get hard. lots of points. So wow. this is going to be a this is going to be the double round, which means all the point values for this round are doubled. Mm, okay. So anybody, it's still anybody's game, and this time I'm going to be smart enough to lay these out <laughs> first. All right. So I have surveyed. Uh, a divisible of 100 uh, gamers, and these are the most popular, the five most popular answers. And here's the question. This is going to be uh, Lisa versus Phil. Name a common gamer stereotype that may actually be true. No. Neckbeards. <laughs> 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 no! I'm gonna count it. I'm gonna count it. It's uh, poor hygiene. Okay. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna count. <laughs> that was a judgment call. I had to make a judgment call, but um, okay. Mm. So, Eric, hey. Did that say doesn't shave or doesn't oh, shower? Oh, actually, I'm, I'm, yeah, it says doesn't shower. Oh, one okay. of the, yeah. Right, but yeah, it's poor yeah. hygiene is the general yeah, topic. That makes sense, yeah. Yeah. Um, I actually uh, forgot to ask. Do you want to pass or play? You can technically pass if you want. It's up to you. You don't even Yay. have to ask. Okay, plus. All right, Eric. <laughs> Same question. Uh, name a common gamer stereotype that may actually be true. More intelligent than the average person? Let's see. I'm just a positive over here. <laughs> Dean. Yeah. Uh, smart, knowledgeable. Cool. Eight points. You can tell gamers answered this. <laughs> yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, I, 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 I messed up in the game already. I'm sorry, Why would you do that? Well, I forgot to ask Lisa to see if she could steal by picking a choice that was higher. Oh. Oh well. Uh, oh. Rules? Where we're going? Well, we that one wasn't rules. higher, so let her. Yeah, I'll okay. go ahead and let you. Okay, go for it. I think that's fair. Yeah. Well, if 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 she does if she doesn't get it, you guys can still get this point. If she does, then this will just be thrown out, and we won't count this for anyone because it's already been revealed. I'm fine playing them have it. Mm. No, no, but that's the way it was supposed to be. If you get yeah. if you don't get number one, it's supposed to go to. It was, it was my mistake. Oh, I see. That's how the game works. It's like, if, okay. it, unless you get the number one answer, you don't automatically get to go. The other person, whoever's up there. But you have two seconds to answer. I'll read it real quick. Name a common ga gamer stereotype that may actually be true. Introverts. Hmm. Judgment I, I, I don't yeah. think I can accept that. I'm sorry. Oh. I, I think I know what number one is going to be. <laughs> it, was, it was a close judgment call, but I don't, I don't think I can accept that. Um, okay, so Eric's you're already gone, so Layton. Awesome. Um, we, we, we retcon that. You right. Know, yeah. that <laughs> Question again. Clever yes. editing, it'll be fun. Uh, yeah. Name a common gamer stereotype that may actually be true. Um, get angry. Get angry? Rage <laughs> quits. Rage quits. Err. Let's see. Didn't you write a research uh, paper on that one? Maybe. No. <laughs> oh, sorry, not according to this. It's only one. 
answer your maze answer, Phil. I actually thought that was one of the answers. If it's not apparently right, not according to be. my chart. So. <laughs> Must not have been high enough. Okay, um, Phil. They're virgins. That's why I was kind of looking at this like. <laughs> I actually gave you the answer. I said they're okay. virgins. You going with that? Yeah. <laughs> well, like so another, this is another actual judgment call, but I'm, I'm I think I'm. We've had. I think we have ideas of what all of the other ones yeah. are now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, <laughs> so close. it's like it's it's kind of, but it's not. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna give it to you. I'm gonna give it to you. I think it's I think it's close enough. That was close. Ding. Poor social skills. Aspergers. Uh, okay. I think that's close. That's close enough. It's it's on, it's on the fence. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be honest. I, I personally wouldn't have given it to us for that one, really? but you but I do like it. But I thank you for it. It's very close. Yeah. yeah. It's close. I do but like my answer. For it. Okay. All right. Um, back to you, Eric. Uh, question again? Name a common gamer stereotype. <laughs> fine for time, but yeah, it's fine. Name a common gamer stereotype that may actually be true. Uh, lives at home with parents. Oh, good one. Lives at home with parents? Yeah. Ah. Uh. All right. One more, and then uh, the Doc and Kruger family, whatever. I think that was what they were called. Number one is still there. Wow. Yes, yeah. number one is still there, and you guys are going to hit yourself when you hear number one. Okay. <laughs> because it's actually more obvious than you think. You're way overthinking. Oh. Clayton, uh, uh, that's your biggest clue? Spends too much time playing games? Sorry. All right, you guys can talk about it. Uh, and you can steal. You can steal these points. Oh, yeah, let's just go with that. Oh. Yeah. Okay. They're nerds. Yeah. Actually, Lisa gets to make the choice. Doesn't yeah, that's actually yeah. true. Uh, okay. And you get to make the choice, and you do not have to listen to them. You can just completely do whatever you want. It's just they're able to give you advice. I'll go with nerds. Okay. Wow. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, let's go for let's let's see the number four answer first. Hates the sun. <laughs> Not the day yeah. star. Hates the sun. Now the number one answer. Number one answer. Common gamer stereotype that may actually be true. Loves Mountain Dew Doritos. Oh, oh that was literally written in oh, by that many people. That's wow. awesome. Literally, they wrote it. You know what? Dew, Good Dur- job, guys. Whoever answered Mountain this. Mountain Dew and Doritos energy drinks were like. Did, that's amazing. Did like yeah. one person that's fill funny. in like eighteen? No, times. no, they were very different answers than everything else. Mm. Anything else I think is wrong. That well, that absolutely. Mountain Dew is known as makes it okay. Fuel, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Give me the neck beards and virgin cards. I'm also obsessed. With, <laughs> I'm also obsessed with those MLG videos that always do. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yes. so, yeah. yeah. I've, I've seen so many parody videos. I've never seen like <laughs> real actual. Right. One. I hear them, but, but I hear from people though that that's actually pretty accurate. This really, video. yes, yeah. My, Maybe overdoing my little gremlin. <laughs> I've, I've tried to find them. <laughs> my little gremlin. I don't really know. Uh, okay. What is MLG anyway? Uh... Major League Game. Major League Game. Oh, Major League Game. Oh, right. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Okay, okay. I know that now. If you were more MLG, you'd know that. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so it's, it's going to go back to um, Eric versus Chris. All right. This is the final part of this round. Then we get to round two. So whoever okay. wins after this, and it looks like keeping in the family is in the lead right now. However, this is a triple point round. Whoa! So it's still anyone's game. This game is like. Why did we even play the first two? Exactly. <laughs> Everyone always asks when I when I watch this game. Okay. So okay. So uh, uh, here we go. This is going to be actually your hardest question. That's why it's triple points. Remember, you can roll at any time, and I'll just stop stop asking. I'll just roll and go with it. <laughs> if we videotaped you while playing games, mm. what would you hope you wouldn't be caught doing? Chris got that first. Mm. Rage quitting. Number one answer. Nice. Ding. Oh, Frustrated, man. angry, rage quit. Okay. You guys are going to play or pass? There's a strategy here to pass. It is a strategy. And that you just will lose. Yeah, but, but you could just lose. <laughs> exactly. I think we're behind enough. We need to play. Yeah, we need to play. All right. We're going to play. It is, it is this triple points. This is worth 90 points. Okay. <laughs> Doc? If we videotaped you while playing games, what would you hope you wouldn't be caught doing? I am going to go on the record and say farting. Farting. I'm sorry, can't count it. Lisa, if we videotaped you while playing games, what would you hope you wouldn't be caught doing? Confusing the controller buttons. That's what I would do. (laughs) Ah. Sorry. Sorry. (laughs) Someone did say that, but not enough people. It's got to be the most popular answer. Most popular answers, I should say. All right, you've got two strikes. Chris, you got to keep your team alive here. Otherwise, they can steal. They can just get one answer and steal this entire game. Yeah. Okay. We videotaped you while playing games. What would you hope you wouldn't be caught doing? Failing. <laughs> ah. Ding. 
Oh. Losing. <laughs> All right, that was 12 points. Okay, or actually times three. 36 points. Ah. Yeah, I had to actually calculate. <laughs> uh, if we videotaped you while playing the stock, if we videotaped you while playing games, what would you hope you would not be caught doing? Uh, like scratching myself? Ding! Hey! <laughs> scratching, touching self inappropriately. Yes. <laughs> that was actually <laughs> 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 sent me masturbation. <laughs> That, that counts under that topic. I literally uh, wrote in you went down my pants. So about, yeah. yeah, I was ashamed of it. So about and the stereotypes we were talking about. Yeah. Um, I don't think we play the same games. Well. <laughs> you don't play DDR? <laughs> I'm really good at Guitar Hero. <laughs> Uh, Alright, the game is still going. You have to get this in order to get the points, Lisa. Oh, no. If we videotaped you while playing oh, games, what would you hope you wouldn't be caught doing? Min-maxing. I'm going to count that, actually. Cheating? Yeah. Oh, oh, wow. that. I'm going to count that. That's wow. close, that's close, but I'm going to count it. Cool. Alright, so y'all get these Would points. you have counted munchkinning as well? Uh, yeah, I think oh, so. Right, excellent. My, 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 the other answer I would have said is spending too much time on character creation. Oh. <laughs> I do that way too much. Does that mean we got 300 <laughs> points on that? Uh, let's see. Well, I'm not sure how much these are worth because they're so just... So we'd love to know. Yeah. Is it worse than Tide? Are Seems y'all like winning these now? three are probably... They might be. Yeah, okay, so if y'all could... Double. Yeah, if y'all could uh, tally up your scores, some of those might Calculate be double. Calculate times. So yeah, check the ones for double. <laughs> do math. So uh, we've got the Doc and Kruger family with 445 Wow! <laughs> and the Keeping in the family with... 151. Yeah. We did but... our best, Jim. <laughs> We're following golf rules. <laughs> We're winning in our own way. <laughs> right? There you go. But triple far. points were just too high, I guess. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. That couldn't, that couldn't possibly be right. Yeah, I guess it is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Triple points are straight. <laughs> That's actually how it usually is in Family Feud, is that whoever wins the triple point. He acknowledges the game. He's like, like eh, no, it's <laughs> whatever. Should have uh, done better. I didn't design this game. Okay, but on the, on the plus side, though, the game's not over. There's like a bu- there's the, the round two, the final round. Worth and four I know I answered more <laughs> questions. Yeah. Um, so, the way that we do round two, and I've... I've oops. This is the actual question for round two. Let me pull out my thing. Would you numbers? rather more one dollar bills or less twenty dollar yeah. bills? <laughs> I'll take the more. Okay. So uh, in round two, for those that haven't seen, uh, what we're going to do is uh, you guys get to pick anyone from your team, and they get to be well, any two people from your team. The first person gets to go first. I'm going to ask them a series of five questions. They only have twenty seconds to answer all the questions. And y'all, because you, because you're the losing team, you get to write down their answers. For me, like keep track of them for me. I'll get you a, a pen. We're gonna do. We're gonna do your job. We're gonna do <laughs> clerical work while they play a game. <laughs> That's what we're we losing. <laughs> because I only have twenty seconds to ask them the questions, so I can't. Okay. Yeah. No, so good. I have to do the time and stuff. So you guys just like really quickly jot down like just one, whatever it. answer oh, it is. <laughs> yeah. yeah, whatever answer. It's, there's just five questions, and then after that, um, the first the, whoever the other person is is in the other room. Then I bring them out afterward, and I'm gonna ask them oh, the exact right. same questions, yeah. and you get a little bit of extra time. You get thirty seconds. But uh, you can't repeat the same answers. And the point is, you have to get up to, I believe it's 150 points. I actually forgot to look that up before I started. What's the penalty if you right. do repeat the answer? It just doesn't count? Or it just yeah. buzzed, and you have to keep trying, because okay. you're, you're being timed. Gotcha. So. gotcha. Okay, so don't start the timer until I, until I finish the question. Okay. 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 All right. Name a video game character that a dentist would love to see in his office. Mario. Uh, name a circumstance in which cheating is okay. To beat a cheater. Name one reason the bad guy did it. For the lulz. Uh How old were you when you played your first video game? Five. If you could only eat one food from a game, what would you choose? Mushroom. Okay. That's it. You had time left. Oh, yeah. A lot of times they do, because if you just go through... Wow. Okay, so... <laughs> let's see. Let's get back in here. Now, you also can't tell him what your choice sure, is. Sure, sure. So if he says one that uh, Zaryanka, I'll, I'll say... Eh. Yeah, why don't, you, why don't you do that? Or do you, do you want the buzzer? Do you want to actually buzz him? <coughs> no, I'll take it. It's just, oh, okay. <laughs> Is there a delay? Yeah, there's a little, there's a slight delay. Okay. I thought you'd get some, like, pleasure from buzzing. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> phrasing. <laughs> yeah, phrasing, that's the best bet. Things you don't want to be caught. <laughs> um, actually, no, this should say 25. All right, so, uh, so now he has, uh, Phil, if you want to do the time again. Uh, he has 25 seconds. He has five extra seconds <clears throat> because of the possibility of being buzzed. But it's not much, much more time. So I'm going to ask you the same questions. You need to find the most popular answers. The timer will start when I finish reading the first question. And if you say something that uh, Chris has already said, you will hear a buzzer. <laughs> yeah. And that will mean you need to either say something else say something else, or say pass, and I'll read the next question. Okay. Anytime you get stuck, say pass, I'll read the next question. 
There's only five questions. If, okay. if, if we get to the end and there's more time, are you going to go back to the question I passed? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, here we go. Name a video game character that a dentist would love to see in his office. Uh, Sonic. Uh, name a circumstance in which cheating is okay. Well, cheat codes. Name one reason the bad guy did it. Uh, because he's misunderstood. How old were you when you played your first video game? Five. Ah. Uh, six. If you could only eat one food from a game, what would you choose? Uh, mana. Okay. That's it. So let me see, uh, right. let me see the answer like, choices. What do I do now? Thank you. <laughs> and we're now going to go through and we're going to see how many points you got. Okay. So let's see. We're going to read through the questions and we'll see how, how right y'all got. So uh, here we go. So yeah, you want to tally the points? So Layton, Layton's going to tally the points. Um, okay, so the first question... Name a video game character that a dentist would love to see in his office. Chris, you said Mario. No, zero points. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I said Kirby. Doc, mm -hmm. you said Sonic. Mm -hmm. Zero points so far. You're not off to a good start. That was very bad. Number one answer on this one was Pac-Man. Pac-Man. Uh, number one answer. Of course. Uh, number yeah. answer. All right, next. I said, oh, oh, sir. <laughs> this fruit has a lot of sugar. <laughs> <laughs> Name a circumstance in which cheating is okay. So, Chris, you said to beat a <clears throat> cheater. Uh, yes, 18 points. Wow. Sweet. So, counter glitches, cheats. Yeah. Mm. I'll put those in the same one. Uh, Doc, you said cheat codes. Uh, yes, 15 points. Uh, built in exploits, cheat codes. Excellent. So, that's okay. Uh, so you, you guys do have some points. Uh, now let's move on. 33. All right. Name, and you need to get 150, so you're not really that close. Ooh, okay. <laughs> Name one reason the bad guy did it. Chris, you said, for the lulls. Uh, <laughs> ding, six points. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Doc, you said, he's misunderstood. Right, yeah. That's the number one answer. Yeah! Wow. 18 points. Oh, I, how many? Uh, 18. Still not that many. There's divided. I forgot to mention for the circumstance in which cheating is okay, the number one answer was whenever losing. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, we have some uh, smart asses. Uh, yeah. uh, okay, so uh, next question. Um, how old were you when you played your first video game? Chris, you said five. That is the number one answer. 27 points. Ooh. Something about that age. Yeah. That's when I got my first console. Yeah. Doc, you said six. Uh, only nine points. Nine points, oh. but you did get you did get on the board. Okay. Um, the number two answer was four. Oh, all right. I would have gone with one. Yeah, there were a few people that said one, and um, I looked at that and I was like, these people are clearly lying. That's the ass. Uh -huh. um, okay, so uh, oh, I think mine was like two or three. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, I can believe that. I think one four, is a little crazy. Think, yeah. um, if you could only eat one food from a game, which would you choose, Chris? You said a mushroom. Uh, ding. Mario Mushroom, six points. Chris, nice. Wow, only six. Six points. Uh, yeah, it was pretty low. Could you imagine the awkwardness of, of eating a mushroom in real life? It's like, <laughs> hey guys, I'm going to have lunch now. <laughs> and you get your head on the ceiling, yeah. break the doors. <laughs> That'd be pretty cool, actually. Oh, you'd get fired. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, Doc, Doing same question. <laughs> Maybe it was an extra life mushroom. Maybe. Okay. <laughs> so, Doc, you said mana? I think so, yes. Uh, yes, six points. Wow. Right. Mana, mana pot. Put huh. them in the same. Oh, okay. Yeah. What was the number one answer? Number one answer was cake from Portal. Oh, uh, yeah. That's stupid. Uh, sweet roll, the yeah, sweet roll from, from Elder Scrolls actually had the same number of, of, of uh, responses. Really? So, I would yeah, say sweet roll. Huh. Yeah. Those are two good answers. Uh -huh. All right, so how many points did they get, Layton? In total, zero. They got, yeah, zero. I just wrote zero for all that. <laughs> they got 105. Oh, oh. so close. <laughs> did you check to make sure it was mathematically possible? No. Actually, it was, <laughs> uh, you know what? It, it, it definitely would. If you wouldn't. had three answers with 50%, that would be. Yeah, yeah oh, that's okay. true. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, if you'd gotten, because you didn't get any for the first question, period. And if both of y'all had gotten some, you would have you already been over. Oh, wow. So... Well, Depending on which answer you got. Is it over? Did we win? So we didn't win the money. So we won, So right? we win. No, no, they still win. They but lost hard enough. Yes. They, they still, they still <laughs> win. Essentially, uh, uh, the, the Doc and Kruger family won, but they didn't win as much money as they could. They basically just won the game. They didn't win the money. Uh, I think it's how it works. I think they win technically the money that they would have won in the game or something like that. 
Why, why do people watch this show? Because you get to watch like families answer really ridiculous questions and then get pissed at each other for answering them wrong. Oh, I think that's it then. That's yeah. why people. Yeah, no, that's, <laughs> that's, that's literally the only reason that, that I watch. <laughs> and I watched so many episodes growing up for that reason. As did I. Yell at each other. I'll always remember this moment that we became a family. Guys. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see y'all at Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah, that triple, the triple one is just that so killed us. tricky. It really yeah, is. I think, I think their thought there was that if you get 100% of the first two rounds, you could have 300 and then tie it with 300. Mm. Um, but, yeah, I don't know how many people are going to get perfect scores in the first two rounds. Mm. <laughs> right. You know, Double Dare was always the same way. Yeah. Mathematically, right. it only mattered if you got the last question right. Yeah. Huh. It, it basically always comes down to that in Family Feud. There are, like, every once in a while, a team will get do so well in the early rounds that they barely eke it out. But, yeah, most of the time, it's it's the person that wins the final round. Wow. It's not really a game show that you that you expect to win because you're good. It's more of just kind of lucky. <clears throat> like, it's kind of like I just found out like how. Uh, oh man, what's the one that Howie Mandel does? Deal or No Deal. Yeah, oh, yeah. I actually oh, yeah. just found out how that's actually played. That's not a game. That's just <laughs> total just luck the entire time. Well, there is there is some strategy to deciding when to cash out. Uh, when to ca- I guess. <laughs> yeah. But... The, yeah. The, the answer for me is always like. I'm getting twenty thousand free dollars. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the subreddit says that the briefcase holders have subtle tells. Oh, really? Is there actually a deal or no deal? <laughs> they subreddit? don't know. Probably. probably. There probably it is. It is Reddit. Uh, it's true. <laughs> deal or no deal subreddit. Subtle tells. Yeah. <laughs> um. So, was there anything that came up as we were doing the game that you guys feel like talking about? Yeah. How wrong people are. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I know there was one one topic that I know we mentioned possibly doing we did. Uh, we, we since we did ask the question about how old you were when you first started playing games, we could talk about yeah, kind of you know, that experience if we want yeah, to go through retro and or youth game experiences. Sure, sure. Uh, Phil, do you want to start with you? And then I want to talk about, about the start game. Uh, talk about the game. <laughs> yeah, if you want to talk about your first game experience. Oh, oh, okay. We're talking about my first game. Video game. Not, video game. I thought that this game. I was just going to say my answers should not have been right. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, first game. Wow. Uh, I want to say it was Burger Time on the Intellivision. Oh, cool. Ooh. But the first game I actually remember playing was Mega Man 2 on the NES. Oh, cool. Yeah, that is a fun game. It started yeah. strong. <laughs> yeah, well, it's all downhill from there. <laughs> <laughs> did you, did you, get, did you actually get to Quick Man? Yeah. That used to piss me off because, oh. like, you have to use the flash. Uh, and I didn't you don't mention. have to. I know, but it's really, really annoying to no, get to. No, otherwise. no, but I, once I had a Game Genie... <laughs> <laughs> I got to oh, there you go. All oh, yeah. the time, but yeah, I totally played that game a lot. What, that, there was no cup there. <laughs> <laughs> so I just went to pour some tea, and it just went straight to the table. Just straight on there. I was going to summon it with my imagination. <laughs> You've been drinking man. Yeah, it was a little yeah, more, more full than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> He's just trying to fill the table. Yeah. Oh well. So, uh, how old were you, Phil, when you did that? Uh, probably, probably three. Three. three? I want to say, yeah. Oh wow! Yeah, I played. I remember. Um, I might have been younger. I don't. I don't know when the television entered the house. Mm-hmm. I just know that. I know the NES showed up when I was three, so maybe that that's about right. Cool. Yeah, I don't think Mega Man Two showed up right. It, it took a little bit after the NES was out for it to show up. Mm-hmm. Um, like, I think it was like two years spread or something like mm-hmm. that. Yeah, something like that. It was one or three. All right, lady. What about you? I think it was like eight. Oh yeah. Yeah, I think it was probably Pokemon. Pokemon? Yeah. Which which one? Red. Or blue. Red. <laughs> both of them. I had both of them. My mom was a bus driver, and some kid left just the cartridge for Pokemon Blue on the bus. That's how I got my Sweet Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I didn't, I didn't play a lot of games, though, like growing up. I got a PlayStation, one of the PlayStation was like halfway through its life, mm. and like... I had Crash Bandicoot, which was awesome, and like a NASCAR game, which I didn't understand because my parents just picked that whatever. <laughs> so it was a little, uh, not until like GameCube that I actually started. Oh, really? Playing a lot of games. What was the GameCube one that you like? You latched onto the GameCube uh, and gaming. Tales of Symphonia. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah that's a good, good one. Yeah, yeah. Good, good one. Some hundreds of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of things you can do in that game. Well, the new game plus too. It's like great. Yeah. I'm gonna play a whole Sorry, other. Well, I'll do it again. Yep. <laughs> yeah, 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 so yeah, yeah. Eric. Um. So mine was probably kind of kind of a similar situation to the Intellivision. Is um, I know that my dad had a Sega Master System um, before I can remember, and so like literally, I guess I've been playing games since before I can remember. Um, so it was probably like Shinobi. 
um, mm-hmm. like for the Sega Master System would be like the first game I ever played. But my first system was uh, a Sega Genesis, and uh, I got the now extremely famous bundle that came with um, Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that was like truly like my first like real game that I had. That and Street Fighter 2 <laughs> around the same time. But uh, but yeah, it goes all the way. But it goes back to like Shinobi and. Yeah, you played the Genesis version of Street Fighter Two. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I didn't actually. Where have you had any... to hit select in order to like change between punches and punches and kicks if you didn't have the six button controller, right? Yeah, actually. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and we didn't have it. We just had the three button one. So yeah. Um, so it was hard to pull off certain combos. Oh yeah, <laughs> as you can imagine. Um, that made me think of something that I can't remember. But yeah. <laughs> Uh, oh yeah, no, I didn't actually have a Nintendo system until an N64, and so like I always had like so that was actually one of the biggest reasons that I was so happy that the Wii introduced the Virtual Console is because I was able to catch up on all of the Super Nintendo games that I missed out on when I was a kid. Because like like I always liked the Genesis and I was always happy with it, and yet like I always remember like as I got older finding out like how much I missed out on like <laughs> in like video game history from that console, so I was able to catch up on that like Mega Man. And, you were like, like that. You mean I can have a controller, like one controller, and I can just push multiple <laughs> buttons to punch and kick? I don't have to hit select. As well, much and so many of them, you only needed like two buttons. <laughs> yeah. So cool. speaking of Shinobi, we actually had a talk a couple weeks ago about um, Sega possibly changing their business focus to go more console or less console, more <laughs> PC smartphone. Mm-hmm. Um, and one of the franchises that came up as a Sega property that might be ditched or sold it was Shinobi. So do you mm. think could Shinobi be saved, and by whom? I don't know if it's really a property that's worth saving at this point. That's like, I mean, I, just, I think too many people have forgotten it. Yeah. You know? that, that was um, kind of our conclusion. I'm, I'm holding out for the, the, the Shenmue uh, oh, Animal God, Crossing yes. like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still waiting for cool. the third. Uh, I think you're going to be waiting a long yeah. time. <laughs> it's, it's like one of my friends who's still like waiting for uh, Dark Cloud 2. It's like, or Dark Cloud 3. Yeah, three. three. Yeah, I'm just still waiting on Mega Man Legends 3. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Half-Life 3 game, Dark Cloud was, was fun. Though. Which one? Half-Life 3? Starcraft yeah. Oh, yeah. But, it's not but cool, but it's not this kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> it'll probably happen. I guess it'll probably happen eventually. Half-Life 3? It, uh, you think it's, it's still in, like, right? They'll ship the HTC Vive with a crowbar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, yeah, you are Half-Life 3. Just do it. <laughs> Um, probably they'll uh, do something after like the new Steam controller and everything comes out, so they mm-hmm. can kind of try to push that mm-hmm. platform. Actually, you're probably right. The crowbar. That's actually really surprising. But... Anyway, all right, Chris. Um, so yeah, my first gaming experience. Um, we had a family Macintosh um, when I was like I think three or four, and I would play demos of flight simulators. Hmm. Um, and I think I'm sure there were a few other things, but the ones I kind of remember from that time were um, like A10 Attack, um, the F18 simulator that came out around the same time, um, Math Blaster, um, In Search of Spot. It was pretty epic. Um, Super Muncher. Uh, I, I played a lot of, you know, Mac games before Mac games were kind of as common as they are now. So they're common. <laughs> they, well, <laughs> relatively speaking, a lot of the bigger games that people care about will come out on both consoles or platforms. Yeah, I think um, Blizzard games. Yeah, in the in the early days, <laughs> in the really early days, Mac actually did have games. Like it actually mm-hmm. used to have games, and then it went to this long period where it didn't have any games and no one really like I did, there's I a did few play was supposed to be a Mac game I did yeah. play a lot well, of Warcraft 2 was. without knowing what I was yeah, doing yeah. So. before they were purchased <laughs> mm-hmm. nice um, and then uh, eventually we got a way underpowered PC that I could play some games on and then we got a hand-me-down Sega Genesis um, in the middle of the N64 era that was nice of you so mo- nice. most of my console games was <laughs> vicarious until the GameCube and then we actually were up with the times so cool Dog. nice well, I need to preface this with uh, saying that even though I'm the old man at the table, pushing 40, mm. my dad, who is 65, is the true video game nerd and always has been. Um, he, he and, and keep in mind, you know, I was a missionary kid, so he's a Southern Baptist uh, preacher who enjoys Grand Theft Auto, <laughs> among other titles. Um, but I remember my very first video game experience was him bringing home Pong and hooking it up to the TV. I mean, it's like one of those classic stories. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's what it was. And we had a little paddle and everything. And we just played and played and played and played. And so, uh, yeah, at some point he brought home like a uh, an IBM, because that's what you called them back then. Mm-hmm. And there was Flight Simulator. And you had to go through all this whole process to, to play it. And then there was the most fun game of all, which was the you know the word processing program, because it had no real function. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you didn't actually use it for anything practical. Um, but then there was the day, I guess it was about my 12th birthday. Um, so this has been like 88. 
when um, he brought home the, the NES for my birthday. And so I had this sleepover party, and we stayed over all night, and we played Mario. And because this was a foreign country, they had very interesting laws about uh, piracy and that sort of thing. So um, there was a rental place that you could go, and you could rent pretty much all the games that were out at the time. And I remember the first games that he brought home were uh, Zelda 1, you know, in the gold cartridge, yeah. and Top Gun. And you can guess which one I, I liked better. <laughs> Top Gun, that, It was awesome. Um, Top Gun was amazing. Gun. I don't think I ever landed the plane, actually. Not once <laughs> did I ever <laughs> manage to land the plane on Top Gun. Um, but no, I'm, and, and so from that point on, I was like, oh, I got I to gotta own Zelda, got to own Zelda, mm. got to own Zelda. And um, being in a foreign country, we couldn't get it. And so I had to wait a year. And by the time... I, we actually got back to the States and mom bought it and I got it for Christmas the next year or whatever it was. Uh, it was Zelda 2. You can imagine my disappointment. Uh, I can't. I, I, I love Zelda 2. <laughs> Did you? No. Zelda 2 is no, no, no. awesome. It's, it's no, an awesome. No. I, I strongly yeah. recommend you give it another chance. It is an Absolutely. excellent game. It's different, but it's an excellent game. It was, it was too different for me. I would always argue that if you take off the Zelda name, it would be so much more loved. Well, I, know, I, I, know. Eight. <laughs> well, I, I don't know. About 8, I think, was just oh, plain, okay. just plain like shit, shit, personally. <laughs> I don't... Uh, it's only good if you pretend that there's a better story, <laughs> right? <laughs> and you can Squall somehow is get dead. Like, a, like a fast forward feature for all the ridiculous, uh, over the top CG for all the summons. Yeah, there, like, oh, I like, for like, I like hitting the square button yeah. over and over again just to <laughs> power it up. I disagree. I am error. You. I like that. You know that reference? Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I, have, I played through Zelda two multiple times. But no, I, to be fair, I did enjoy Zelda two, but I was still deeply, deeply yeah. disappointed that it was not Zelda one. It's a very different. And I game. missed out yeah. on the Zelda yeah, one. Yeah, you didn't have enough bombs. Yeah. yeah. Because I had it, I had it for a week. Four arrows. And so I literally <laughs> went years before being able to finally play Zelda one again. Mm. Um, so it was kind of interesting. Yeah. So I, I would actually call my first true first video game experience be Mario. Uh, Super Mario Brothers, yeah. to be precise, because that's the one game I owned for like a year, right. and I didn't own any of the other games. It was just a rental thing, and so I played that one hundreds of hours, hundreds and hundreds of. Hours. I never got any good at it, actually, which is the <laughs> irony. But um, yeah, so it, you know, the uh, the video games are strong in my family. You know, my father has it. I have it. My <laughs> wife has it. Um, my, my grandfather. My will have it. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> my grandfather was actually the the funny story because uh, literally until the day he died, he played uh, Super Mario. He loved the little jumping man game. That's what he called it. <laughs> <laughs> so and that was that was in the early nineties. So yeah. his original name, Jump Man. Yeah, yeah, Jump Man. He was savvy. Really? <laughs> Don't touch the I purple mushroom. <laughs> also true. <laughs> Jen, That's my story and I'm a good, good life advice. Lisa, do you have some early, oh, yeah. early video game memories? Oh, yeah. um, earliest memories happen to have to do with uh, Pac-Man and stores. And then um, I think we had got a Math Blaster game on my parents' PC. Um, I also have a vague memory of an Atari game uh, at a family friend's house. Hmm. But none of those I really played. My first real chance to play a game was whenever we were at a neighbor's house and he had Mario 3. And so my first memory was actually navigating the external map before you enter mm. one of the, mm. the, the worlds. Um, about a year later, we actually got a Nintendo, and so I was quite ex- exposed quite well to Mario's 1 through 3, as well as Duck Hunt. <laughs> and um, what, 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 what. yeah, about two years later, then we got the <laughs> Sega Genesis which was really my brother's game, but I played hours and hours of Sonic the Hedgehog. So, anyway. Sonic. Cool. <laughs> what about mobile? I'm curious what everybody's first mobile game was. Oh, we can go through that. Yeah, I'll answer first real quick. And then, yeah, that's a good yeah. question, actually. Follow so mobile the same as that. Like, as in, like, a handheld yeah. system? Or? Oh, oh, okay. Mo- oh. I, no. I can tell you mine was actually, like, a football game that had, like, three pixels on yeah. it. Yeah, okay. there, they had those, the Tiger ones. Yeah. Anyway, so, yeah, so I guess my, my first video game experience was... Um, at a friend's place, I think a lot of people had that. Um, they had an Atari, and it was um, Centipede. It was a Millipede or Centipede. It might have been Millipede. Um, but yeah, that was my first experience. But uh, the system, the first system that I owned was the uh, NES, the original Nintendo. Um, we got the Super Mario Bros. Duck Hunt, like a two-pack cartridge. So I had that, and I loved that. Um, I think, even though I really enjoyed it, the the first game that I really did fall in love with was Legend of Zelda, which I saw first at my grandfather's place. He had it first. 
and because he was actually really big into video games. Nice. And uh, he had it, and he the first thing that he did when he got it was he um, asked me to sit down and try to play it. And I was still really young at the time. I was maybe like you know six or something at the absolute oldest. Uh, when I first when I first played, I was probably like three or something. I, I got the I got the NES, and I was like four, I guess. But yeah, he had when he had the um, uh, Zelda, I was like five or six or something. And uh, you know somehow I was able to find the fairy ring. Like on the first try, wow. oh, wow. it was just like a big thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. I just kind of went randomly to the screen and found it. And so they would like ask me. It was uh, remember it was, it was my grandfather and my uncle, and they would like try to get. They would call me into the in from the other room. It's like a Thanksgiving <laughs> or Christmas or something. And they'd call me in to like find the fairy ring when they would get hurt, <laughs> and I'd like find the fairy ring for them. And then uh, <laughs> very like very soon thereafter, which was probably the, the following Christmas, which would have been pretty soon, I got Zelda one for myself, and I played the whole game and was able to get through and beat it without using any hit guides or anything like that because that would have been cheating. <laughs> uh, and yeah. that's not okay? Yeah. There were no hit guides back then. Oh, yes, you, there were. Oh, you, yes, there were. Nintendo you power the Nintendo power. Yeah. And yeah. they also had a special hit guide for you, Zelda. Oh, okay. Yes, I was they, say, they sold you, it. You, I, I, you could, you I could give them a dollar a minute and they tell you mm-hmm. the answer. <laughs> that's paying for it. That's, that's not true, cheating. In fact, I later played through Zelda 2 with my grandfather, mostly. Um, yeah, playing it through, and he had a friend that he knew uh, mapped out the final temple, a temple of time, because we couldn't figure out where to go. And he had a friend map, like, wrote this really, really, you know, like, very simplistic on, like, notepad paper, the way that you're supposed to go, the different rooms you're supposed to go through in the temple of time, so we could get to the end and actually do the game. So, so yeah. So, um, yeah. So, I'm, I'm pretty old, too. I have some early experiences as well, but. Those are my earliest ones. Some of us are gamers before GameFacts.com. Yeah. Was the <laughs> it's the same thing with Duck Hunt. Like, I, I, I was the one who would get right up and put the gun on the screen and, like, shoot. You know, try to move on really quickly. Yeah, you put the gun on the screen. It's like, you're trying to cheat in. You try to get it right well, as pop up. light wasn't fast enough for you? <laughs> you just well, couldn't it's, miss. It's, it's harder. It's, uh, uh, it's a lot harder to actually aim properly when you sit farther back. So I, I think that's the cheat. point, isn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would try to get, like, a really nice board. So I guess I didn't cheat at that game, but I didn't. I never really felt bad about it because it didn't really feel like it was much of a game. Anyway, it wasn't really a huge stock up there. Oh, wow. But, yeah, my, my, I remember my grandfather would sit as far back as he possibly could and would hit them, like, every time. Wow. And I was kind of marveling at that. How is he with real guns? Oh, really good. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's... let's He's a sharp shooter. You want to talk about uh, mobile handheld... Uh, our handheld yeah. systems, really. Okay, so when you say Phil? when we say handheld, uh, you mean... Game Boy. Do you the, count... The Nokia do you, Engage? Do you, do, you, do, you, do you count Tiger handheld yes. games? Yes. Oh, hell yeah. Okay, then my first Tiger handheld game was Mega Man 3, which is not like the NES game. <laughs> oh, you don't say. You don't say. Uh, Mega Man's kind that, of... That's super I also, I also had right? one of, uh, Now, if we want to go even further back and mm. more technical, first handheld game I have is one of those little water games where you press the button oh, and you try to get those the, things. You try to yeah. shoot the bubbles up so it those are like cool, moves actually. the ring onto the hoop. Yeah, yeah. Can yeah. they still make those? Somewhere, they I'm do. sure. Wow. I think McDonald's actually had like a Sonic version of that. <laughs> so it was like Sonic rings you're trying to get on. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, oh, they oh, did, oh. yeah. I Major might have had those, but that's yeah. That, that was my first yeah. game experience, <laughs> and I, I refer to those as the dark age of handheld games. <laughs> I mean, they were they were good for what they were, but you know, compared to what we have now. Yeah. So, did you ever play? Because during that same period, they did Nintendo did have the the Game and Watch series. Yeah, I never but those had, were too expensive. No, they were poor. a lot more pricey. I was poor. Yeah. I never, I never, I've still I never, never played. I still they can only afford Tiger system, <laughs> uh, and. I st- but on the on the same topic though the uh, you know like the modern mobile if we have a buzzer now it's like if I'm out of time <laughs> yeah. it, it's brought the iPad back up um, the first like iOS mobile game in the modern era I played was uh, what, what is like called tap rhythm tap or something like that it was, one, um, it was that guitar hero yeah like, I know the one you're what talking is it about. called there was one I think it was tap tap revolution tap tap revolution that's yeah. what it was that was the first that was the first uh, modern mobile game I played and I they had all this music I liked and I'd download because they, they didn't have DLC really mm-hmm. or, or in app purchases so I'd be like here's all the music for today you can have yeah and I actually got introduced some introduced to some pretty decent music that way mm-hmm. Cool. Well, Layton, you, I know we know your first yeah, uh, handheld game was. Pokemon. I guess like because uh, I wasn't thinking about it, but like I had um, this little game just had like two buttons. It was probably a tiger. It might have been a tiger. Yeah. I'm not sure, uh, but it was a little soccer game. And, oh, like, yeah. There was 
one goal, and then there's a whole another screen, which was the midfield, and another <laughs> screen, which is the other goal. And you could move, like, three spots, and there was two players, and you could pass it. Oh, cool. That was, that was it. Yeah, I've seen, there's, like, an old one like that that was uh, football, and I, I've seen mm-hmm. that before, yeah, I but I've never seen the soccer one. a ton of the soccer one. Once I figured it out, though, I kind of stopped playing. I realized there was a way to win, basically. Yeah. I don't know which came first. I know that I had both um, a Game Boy and then a classic Game Boy yeah. like when it first came out. And I had a uh, Game Gear, um, one of the few people who actually had one of those. Mm. But what was funny is, uh, even though I always liked it, I only ever actually had one game for Game Gear. Uh, for one reason or another. And it wasn't any of the Sonic games, which I always did want. It was uh, the Lion King for Game Gear. Huh. And it's like, and that's like often considered like one of the most challenging like games for no reason. Really? And like most people don't get past like the, maybe the second level. And I never, I never actually did. Was so it the that's, same as the SNES version, basically? I think so. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and so yeah, I never actually even got to like Simba as an adolescent. I just got to die like before even like Mufasa died. And so, um, but uh, but yeah, I always I always love. I've actually always personally really loved handheld gaming. And like that's something like we talk about like with my friends a lot. Is that I'm actually a pretty big like mobile game player. Like mm-hmm. even today, um, I think just partially because I think on one hand I just like the idea of being able to play in quick spurts mm-hmm. and just be able to then get back to life and just. How, how not necessarily addictive, but just like in quick bursts, how fun that is. And that's kind of how I often ingest games anyway, even though I am a big art JRPG fan as well. Like, I mean, I don't play those as much anymore. And I think that's part of it. But I think a part of it is I've just always really enjoyed handheld gaming. Like, I mean, during uh, the 2000s era, um, my DS was always my favorite system that I always had. Like, I've always felt that that's like one of the best libraries of that gen. Um, probably because of the JRPGs that were on it, but um, and uh, but I actually do even remember having the Tiger games and actually really enjoying those. There's um, probably my favorite one was uh, <laughs> there's an Aladdin game that was made for that one, um, and I don't even remember what the game was. I think like Aladdin from like the Disney. Movie. Right, right. And I think it was like that. You were just simply like from the very first scene, like when he's like trying to avoid like pots and stuff that are like falling in yeah I, I think i played that you one. actually played that yeah like i mean i probably played that one as much as i probably played my game gear honestly i'm just like imagining actual arabia like you just got pots falling <laughs> just in the street falling from the of, sky yeah. like you walk down the street like by the end of the day it's just like riddled with broken pots <laughs> right. everywhere yeah. yeah the middle east is not osha compliant <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and there's just like monkeys running wild everywhere you know, apparently <laughs> well according to aladdin yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> at least one oh. yeah chris um <laughs> So my first, I actually didn't own any handhelds until Game Boy Advance, um, so I got to sort of look enviously over friends' shoulders and occasionally play uh, Game Gear stuff, like the old Sonic games and stuff like that. Um, Game Boy Advance, I think the first ones I owned, um, well, the ones I remember were this uh, X Games skateboarding, it was kind of this generic sports thing for GBA, (laughs) Um, Lego Island 2 for GBA, which was... It wasn't bad for my age, I suppose. <laughs> um, and what else did I have on that at the beginning? Nothing particularly Nothing good, good, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I, did, I did learn to use the Game Boy Advance properly after a while. <laughs> um, and then as far as uh, like mobile, mobile games, um, I had um, a Tetris demo for my like one of my first flip phones, my first cell phone. I didn't get until I was 16. Um, and then uh, when I got my smartphone, I forget the name of it, but it was this puzzle game um, where you're basically trying to match three or match four, whatever the case might be, and it's uh, green, blue, red, and maybe one other color block. Mm -hmm. Um, Their gimmick was that you could turn the phone, and actually everything would shift that way and fall um, with the gravity of the phone, so to speak. (laughs) Um, And so I forget what that was called, but it was actually pretty cool. It's called My Pad? (laughs) <laughs> the cool. uh, the text it all just falls with the, with the screen so doc alright so my very first one was the classic football by Mattel yeah it was that green oh yeah yeah you know I've, I've which played. was actually worth some money until it was like the 1978 version Mm. Um, but it was actually worth some money until 2003 whenever they reprinted it and now they're just flooded the market and <laughs> they're everywhere um, but I wouldn't consider that one mine. I would consider that my dad's. So really, um, 
the Game Boy, original Game Boy, the one that ate like all the batteries. The Game Boy had the all best battery the life, though. It did, but I mean, it's still, it was like, battery. Mom, can we buy more batteries? No. Because <laughs> you just played it for so long. Use your battery allowance. I just had the, I had the battery pack. Yeah. The extra right. battery. And then, but I also had the magnifying glass for the lens. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, the light and the, the light right. and the button expander. Oh yeah, you had the robot. Yeah, yeah. I, I had the I had the full suite. The one that plugged of, in and ate more battery life, or yeah. it had its own batteries. I think it plugged into the headphone jack. Or yeah, <laughs> that sounds right. I, uh, yeah, I, I had one of those. Well, I, I remember playing Tetris in the car, mm-hmm. and this was the like you know the. Uh, what was it? Get tetricized? Was that the was that the that pro- sounds painful. promo? <laughs> I can't I can't remember. Te- it was it was like side. Tetricide. Yeah, tetricide. Well, te- tetricide. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, the, the promo was Shalom. basically that there's a sickness <laughs> and it's called playing too much Tetris. And I remember like looking out the window of the car and seeing the Tetrads fall, filling you know, <laughs> filling in the buildings between the buildings, and I'm like, I may be playing too much Tetris. <laughs> just just think when AR gets there, that oh, will yeah, happen. We'll be able, yeah. we're already there. We, Pretty much do that now. Did you guys see the thing that uh, Google Maps did with Pac-Man? Yeah, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's pretty cool. Similar idea. I played entirely too much Mortal Kombat on my original Game Boy. Yeah, I had that game. I had that game too for Game Boy. Killing Strangers or something? No, no. I was just I played uh, I played that game more than I played like any other Mortal Kombat game. And it's it's kind of it's kind of fun watching that in all like what is it sixteen gray scale levels? Oh yeah. (laughs) Not not quite as visceral. Speaking of Mario. That Mario game was one of the best. Which Mortal one? Kombat, Mario, yeah. the, Mario the first one, yeah, Mario Land. Mm. Mario Land was really good. I had to Mario Land two. Mario Land two was was, was where they started going into the weird stuff, and then they introduced. It was a third one. They had Wario Land, and that was where they actually got really experimental. Wario Land, was, really Wario Land was awesome, and yeah. all the Wario Land yeah. games were I very really experimental. I got excited when I got my Game Boy because I was like, "Oh, I've heard about this Mario thing. <laughs> I'm gonna go get Mario." And we went Toys R Us. <laughs> And it had Wario, and I was like, that's like Mario plus one. Yeah. Wow. You should have got it. Wario. So I got it, awesome. and it was great. It was really hard. That's a make, weird typo. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, that's close enough. That's the knockoff Mario. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's, it's clever. They, would, they, they did a lot of really cool stuff with the Wario. We'll play with Wario, yeah. my lame boy. Unfortunately. I'm leaving. <laughs> now, who remembers the, what was it called? Super Game Boy. Oh, yeah. Remember the Super Game Boy? You could plug the cartridge into oh, your sure. Super yeah, Nintendo. Super, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I never had a and Super Nintendo. And it colorized yeah. it. Yeah, it colorized You had, like, the schemes that you could choose between. Yeah. Just different palette swaps. Yeah, pretty much. And between different levels, you needed to, to swap the palettes out. So you'd actually be pausing and <laughs> swapping out the palettes. It's kind of fun. That was the only way to play Game Boy games later on, though. Really? Yeah, yeah I thought so. In many ways, yes. It was way better to play with the full controller, in my opinion. Man, I remember the first time that um, I put a game into a Game Boy Color, and that just changed everything for me. Mm-hmm. It was just, oh man, it's so vibrant and amazing. Mm-hmm. But actually, that was right around the time, like the Game Boy Color came out right around the time that Pokemon started getting big. Yeah. And I actually had Pokemon before, like on the regular Game Boy, and I remember putting it into the color just to see what would happen. And they actually did something kind of cool with it, like where uh, red would actually have a red tint on it. So like it otherwise looked like a normal, like kind of that odd greenish, except it was just slightly red. And then the blue cartridge came out slightly blue. Huh. That's, That's cool. cool. And then Pokemon Yellow, which was the actually the best one of the original <laughs> run, you had a Pikachu that followed you around. Yeah. And it was like a You were Ash, Pikachu. darn it. You could go talk to the Pikachu, and the Pikachu would have like, bleh. Right. <laughs> okay, it, w- it couldn't make that kind of noise. <laughs> right. It that couldn't say cool. Pika. No, they didn't have the memory for it. All right, Lisa, what was your first handheld gaming experience? Well, unless you count Speak and Spell, which I got when I was about five. <laughs> no. Um, then I Where's would the say that it would be the uh, <laughs> original Game Boy that either my cousin or my brother had. But I ended up somehow playing hours of Tetris on it, no matter what. Um, it was then many years later that I got a Game Boy Color that was just mine and played hours and hours of, I think, Tetris and probably a, a Sims game, as I recall, I had on that. But hmm. anyway. Like yes. The Sims? Like The Sims for Game Boy Color. That's, that's definitely possible. Game Boy Color went until like the early 2000s. Different. They were very different than The Sims, but yeah. Oh, yeah. They were very, very mm-hmm. different. Yeah, they were like third person, mm-hmm. isometric. Weird. And they had quest lines. Yeah. Yeah. They were actually really good. I didn't know like games were different. 
between things. So like I when I first had a phone, I was like, The Elder Scrolls, I've heard of that. That's cool, I'm gonna buy that. And it was not <laughs> what I thought it would be. <laughs> There's no way that could run on here, but I don't know anything about technology, so <laughs> Sort of I got a computer. I play the games. Yeah. <laughs> I play it on here now. I'm gonna put a couple games on it. <laughs> yeah, my my first experience was also Game Boy with Tetris. Was the first handheld system that I got. I actually got that before I, I even saw any of the uh, the Tiger Electronic ones, which I saw later. A lot of those, those games from friends. But yeah, I got a, a Game Boy with Tetris, and um, sh- very shortly thereafter, I got the Zelda, which is the main one that I wanted. The Link to the Past, not Link to the Past. Uh, Link's Awakening, Link's Awakening, which is my favorite, uh, probably my favorite Zelda game, um, because it's very different and weird. I hear a lot of people say that. I love, I, I just, I'm with I, you on that one. I was really into the way that the story was told, even though it was very simple. I felt that it just had a little something extra, like sort of like this kind of like wistful feeling to it, mm-hmm. sort of like tone that kind of went through the entire game. Um, I mean, gameplay wise, you could say that maybe, because they, they definitely did some experimental things. Um, you know, the first Zelda, I think, still did a lot of things in terms of the way the exploration worked, and you could do things in kind of any order. I still think that was probably the best way to go. But, and you know, I've liked a lot of the newer ones too, like Wind Waker. But yeah, I think Link's 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 Awakening sort of stuck with me a lot more than than the other ones, mm-hmm. especially because of when I played it. You know, a lot of like car trips and sort of like trying to adjust the shadows and put my hand just the right way so I could still see. What yeah. I was, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I still I had those Tetris experiences too. I remember my first Tiger Electronics game very well, um, which I didn't get for years later for whatever reason. And it was a Jurassic Park game, and it was really bad. Um, and I know my parents got it for me at one point because like, I think I had no batteries in my Game Boy. We were out and, you know, driving around somewhere. They didn't want to deal with me give the kids car. something. Yeah, <laughs> just like messing with my sisters as usual. So they just gave me like the Jurassic Park Tiger game, and it was. <laughs> So bad. And I felt really bad for people that had nothing but tiger. <laughs> hey, kid, hell of a dinosaur. <laughs> well, because they knew I liked Jurassic Park, so they were like, right. hey, just play the Jurassic Park game. Did, did you did you get the the game and look at it and says, I know this, it's a Unix system. <laughs> <laughs> I should have. Yeah. I really should have. Now, next time that you're a child, you'll know to do that. <laughs> there we go. Uh, you had to use a soundboard at some point, I guess. Yeah. I think you were just running away from... Dinosaurs in it. I don't even remember. That's how I live like life. You're like in a. <laughs> Straight away from dinosaurs? Yeah. I've listened. So far, so good. <laughs> Never hey. look at your right mirror, though. <laughs> right. <yeah. laughs> Objects in mirror are closer than they appear. That, that they are. They always are. Yeah, I don't even remember my first handheld game either. I mean, not handheld, um, mobile game. Mm. I'm never, I, I don't really like a lot of mobile Snake games, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, probably something like that. Or, oh, it, I know, actually, if we're counting calculators. Um, we used to play a lot oh, of yeah. that, like, like Mafia or Drug Wars on, like, by TI-83. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, we're like, you know, they, they had that game where it was basically just, like, an economy-type thing, and you would buy and sell. Yeah. But it was, like, you know, drug and gun-related, because that was supposed to be... Uh, like it was, it was risque and cool. Right, and you weren't yeah. supposed to talk about. All, it. all the cool kids played Mario on their calculators in high school. You could also do that too. Yeah. Yes, I remember that. That was also popular. And Tetris, a really shoddy version of Tetris. Mm-hmm. I was never popular enough to have a calculator that could play Mario. <laughs> yeah. Well, in my school, you had to. You, you had got to, to a certain, yeah. a certain level of math. They were like, you have to have a graphing calculator. So, you know, you had to get at least like a, you know, an eighty-one at one point. Uh, and then, see, I, all I had was the solar-powered monstrosity that. Had I'd always hit the rad button, and I, and I was hoping for the best. <laughs> <laughs> it actually made the math wrong. <laughs> you were pushing the rad button, you're like, totally! <laughs> right? <laughs> cool! Hey, hey, all right. hey, hey. Awesome. I wore a lot of day glow. <laughs> That's all I got. The, the graphing calculator is the only reason I think I passed high school um, algebra at mm-hmm. all. Or uh, Algebra 2 and Pre-Cal, because what I would do is I'd just chart out the equations they gave you, and then just find the intersection on the graph. And I would just put in the answer oh, that the way I stopped calculating. Yeah. Yeah. I think a lot of people did it's, that. It's solving the question. Though. Yeah, it, 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 it solves the problem. Yeah. You know, I gave you the correct answer. So That's actually a good point. I remember uh, being able to play games on them, and, uh, but it was only a certain TI-83 that was able to. It was like the special edition, and uh, it was either like in blue, which is the one that I had, or like a white, whitish silver. Oh, yeah? But the regular black one could not like actually do that they didn't have any games on it so i remember like really pushing for my parents to get well, the one that had my school banned those 
Well, and that's what they eventually did. Is like I remember, like by my junior year, they just simply cleared every single one at the start of the semester. There was always a way that you could say, like, because I because I, I was with I, I kind of some of the people that I knew. We were just sort of there was a way that you could like store it and like a part mm-hmm. of it where if they cleared it, it wouldn't mm-hmm. actually clear mm-hmm. the full memory, and then you could still have a spoon. Yeah, a lot I, of my I forget time, how that worked. Like but. making choose your own adventure games <laughs> in my calculator. In your calculator, and then you could learn how to save it permanently. Yeah, awesome. yeah. I, for, huh. I forget how to do it. It's been so long. But so yeah, I used to be able to do that. Aren't, like, aren't these? Aren't those calculators still like a hundred plus dollars? Yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Probably. Probably. Yeah. Why don't people just invest in that? That's a much more stable <laughs> currency <laughs> than anything. Just else. buy like <laughs> instead of buying gold, buy graphing. Buy calculators. graphing calculators. It's it's very very limited. Limited. Oh, I was thinking that you make and why don't just people just develop games for graphing calculators <laughs> don't try to tap the mobile market or steam just go straight it will for always it. be like, there and the hardware won't change right, right. Yeah. Kickstarter. The, the graphing cal- <laughs> it's a consistent ecosystem <laughs> right. the graphing calculator market is possibly the first indie market right I yeah, don't, I don't think well, there's a there's a like the most indie sure. market, right? I mean, like it was like you make no money. It was just yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm gonna say it's, just, it's literally just kids like in school like doing little little Did, games. Didn't you stuff. have to like you had to like hook it up to your computer to install apps or something or little? Where, you, could te- you could actually like program you could, you could, on, yeah, 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 yeah but but why? Yeah, like you yeah, could go I'm online and like actually. Because I have a lot of time. You could do it in class. <laughs> that's actually what a lot of people did is just yeah. play the games mm-hmm. in class I wrote a or, I had, or you had a friend who did it yeah. 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 they get, wrote it yeah. right? <laughs> you couldn't get away with like playing out your Game Boy in class but you could sit there with your graphing yeah. calculator it's like what are you doing I'm solving the equation <laughs> I'm taking notes that was the like, hitting function 1 function yeah. 2 it's like okay but I, but I asked you who was the 22nd president so I don't know math <laughs> That was the high end way of passing notes as well, I remember. Yeah. Yeah. Who was the raddest president? Uh (laughs) Grover Cleveland. (laughs) Yeah. Say it's Martin Van Buren because of the hair. Is your face on a mountain? I don't think so. I'm not going to say it's not. (laughs) (laughs) I haven't seen all the mountains yet. Are we restricting ourselves to Earth mountains? (laughs) <laughs> I'm sure somewhere in the multiverse there's a mountain with your face right. on it. Yeah. You are. I wanted a story behind that. <laughs> they saw my podcast. That's what it was. I have a story about a mountain, but I don't know if it's time. Um, Galaxy if you, Quest. If you, if you got a quick story, we could probably squeeze that in. Um, yeah, sure, why not? So, uh, there's a... So, my family, my mom's side of the family, the Zaplatas, or as they were known back in Europe, the Zaplatas... Um, always, we were never really sure exactly where they came from because they, we knew that they were in what was, in the 90s, Yugoslavia. And then, of course, I believe that it's what is now, not Croatia, doesn't really matter. Uh, Bosnia-Herzegovina is the current regime there, country there. Um, but anyway, so they were considered Austrian because they were, that was part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, whatever. Long story short, um, there's a mountain there, and I don't know if it's still called Mount Zaplata or not. Um, and the reason why is that was essentially the mountain where uh, great, 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 great grandpa Zaplata was, uh, or maybe it was Carlson, it was one of them, um, actually used to live. And that was where his farm was. And so it was kind of one of those things that you had the land and so you got to name it what you wanted to name it. And that was before people started mapping and so it didn't really matter what things were named. Um, and uh, But they did start to do that around the turn of the century. And so on many maps, and you can find old ones that actually say Mount Zaplata back then. Um, so it was the family mountain. Uh, it's no longer, I believe, called that because around the time that then the Zaplatas decided to move to America, and uh, he was a gambler, and he decided that he was going to... He was having, he was really feeling his luck one night playing poker, and uh, he had already lost one of the goats, and he had already lost a few of the other things, and decided, well, what else do I have? I guess I have the clothes on my back, or I have my mountain, my, my <laughs> farm. And uh, he did, and he bet the mountain and ended up losing it. And uh, so to this day, Mount Zaplata, I don't know if it's still there, and I want to go find it one day um, and see if I can find it. But, uh, the but six yeah. of us will join you. Right, yeah. <laughs> We're family now. Right, yeah, family. exactly. You're, you guys are part of the Zaplata and clan. Next we'll, time. We'll go into the mountain <laughs> right. to reclaim your treasures. Our long forgotten gold. Right. We're going to go on location next time. Mm-hmm. Podcast up the mountain. Yeah, there you we'll go. need a burglar, so let's get Gandalf to find one for us. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right. Well, it's probably about time for us to start wrapping things up, but we'd like to remind you that, as always, you can listen to the Backward Compatible Podcast anytime, anywhere, in any way you like. Subscribe and listen to us on SoundCloud, iTunes, Stitcher, or YouTube. Then join the discussion.
I haven't heard you do that in person. Wow, thanks, Chris. Cool. There you are. Yeah. <laughs> I, I do that live now. <laughs> Where podcasts must be downloaded. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're the Kool Aid man now? Something like that. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> cool. No, that's just the pills kicking in. <laughs> I just start talking like this. <laughs> so, <clears throat> I've had bronchitis. <laughs> You should, do, you should do that in the next one. Like, I'm not there. <laughs> Let's do the We're going to do the Jeopardy game. <laughs> Where's the drug of water? <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't understand your answer. Where's the drug of water? It's for me. Phil, you okay to drive home? <laughs> Uh, so I guess we'll just go around the table real quick. <laughs> yes, no, no, we definitely are. Oh, oh you're still recording. I'm packing up. So, uh, so I'm Chris. Oh, I'm Doc. I'm Lisa. I'm Jim. So, wait. I'm Eric. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Bye, guys. <laughs> we want you to join the discussion on our website, backward-compatible.com. You bring a unique perspective, and dialogue makes everyone better. Leave a comment in our podcast section, and if it's good, one of the crew members will respond to it. This time, tell us what you would have answered for each of our 10 Famicom Feud survey questions. Thanks for listening. Until next time, stay compatible.